So let's see what six things you can copy from the great Sandrato forehand to help improve your forehand. Now, this video is courtesy of Sandrato Plays Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to his awesome channel. I've put his link in the description below. All right, let's get right to it. Sandrato's got a great forehand. He's a great player. And there are a lot of things that I want you to copy from his forehand. All right, very first thing is rotate the body and take the racket back initially with both hands. During the unit turn where, you know, as soon as you see the ball come off your opponent's racket, you recognize that the ball's coming to your forehand, rotate the body. And that's what we see him do here. He gets his body side on very, very early before the ball even bounces on his side. In fact, he turns past a little bit past 90 degrees by the time the ball bounces. So that is perfect. And you'll notice he does it initially with both hands on the racket. When you coil and you turn your body away from your target, it allows you to uncoil later on. Here's the second idea. And I actually want to show you this from the side. And it has to do with when you move that non-hitting hand back forward again. So we know that he's going to rotate the body with both hands. We can see that his nose is closer to the net than his non-hitting hand. Since he's a righty, that's his left hand. And that just facilitates a major coil. He's got his chin resting on his front shoulder because he's rotated his shoulder under his chin. But I want you to notice how his hand makes this move as his racket goes like this. Check this out. See how his non-hitting hand is going forward as the racket is dropping. What a lot of recreational players do is they will keep their non-hitting hand back until the racket drops. You don't want to do this. So please go out and film your forehand from the side and from the back and compare what you see in that video with what you're learning in this video. He is correctly moving his non-hitting hand forward as the racket drops. You know who else does this? Djokovic. If you watch Djokovic's left hand, both of them are in a very similar position. Um, he's more Eastern, he's more semi-Western, so of course the strings are going to be facing in slightly different directions at this point. But notice they both have their nose closer to the net than their non-hitting hand. They've both coiled, right? But watch Djokovic. Watch his left hand. Watch how his left hand goes forward as the racket is dropping. So his racket's going to go like this. So is Sandrato's. And they both make this move. It is so critical that that non-hitting hand is going forward. You'll actually notice that Djokovic is more going straight across with the non-hitting hand, where Sandrato was going down and then up. I actually use the down and up technique, just like Sandrato. Um, but both are great. What you want is as you're striking the ball, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but what you want as you're hitting the ball is to look like you're waving to the opponent or that non-hitting hand is up. That just facilitates the body rotation. You do not want this non-hitting hand dropping. If it happens, it impedes hip turn. Your hips will not rotate. Your body won't rotate. And this is why players often struggle turning their hips on the forehand because the non-hitting hand drops as they're hitting rather than lifting. So it's a great side-by-side side, side side comparison. Needless to say, Sandrato's forehand, really clean, probably cleaner than my hands after washing them for 20 seconds. All right, for the third idea. Close the racket face before hitting a forehand. Now, Sandrato is not swinging super fast. So this is why his butt cap is pointing, you know, inward, like almost toward him rather than the butt cap pointing toward the ball. But he does that when he's swinging really fast. You could tell he was just warming up here. These are some of his first shots that he hit in this rally. So that's fine. But you'll notice his strings are tilted down. The amount that your strings tilt down will be based on what grip you use. So the more Western you are, the more closed your racket face typically. The more Eastern, you'll close the racket face a little less. Has to do with where the contact point is and getting your strings to face forward and where the strings face just because of the strings. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the grip. But you'll notice that before he hits the ball, his strings are tilted down. This is vital to getting your strings to face forward at contact. If you are someone who, let's say a beginner, if you hit the ball over the fence all the time, it's because when the racket's in the back, you don't have your racket tilted, but rather your racket is straight up and down. And if your racket is straight up and down, like you could balance a coin on the top edge, by the time you swing up to the ball, the strings are going to be facing up over the fence. Again, this is why beginners hit the ball over the fence all the time, because they don't know to tilt their strings down so that when they swing up to the ball, then the strings face forward and they can continue swinging up, getting topspin. 
And here's a great view of what the closed racket face gives you at contact from the side. With the strings facing down, as we saw prior to contact here, he is going to have a long contact zone. He can hit the ball anywhere between now and now, and that ball is going in. Now, that it's only one frame, but just think about it. He can hit the ball anywhere in this large area. That is called a contact zone, and the ball's going in. If he hits the ball back here, the ball's going to go to the right. If he hits the ball out there, the ball's going to go to the left. But that's how you hit into different areas of the court, left side of the court, right side of the court. It's a contact zone. Having your strings closed prior to contact gets your strings to face forward as you're hitting the ball. As long as you're swinging somewhat low to high, which he is, which we're going to talk about next, you are going to get top spin on that ball. So now let's go to contact. This is number four, the fourth idea. We talked about taking the racket back with both hands and rotating the body clearing that non-hitting hand out of the way as the racket drops and closing the racket face. So now let's talk about the low to high swing. That yellow line is the height of contact. Let's look at his swing path. So here is his racket, and there is his racket. He is swinging like this. His racket path is low to high. When you hit a tennis ball, you do not want to swing straight forward through it. <laughs> Unless you're three feet from the net and you can just swing down or forward into the ball. But behind the baseline, never. You need to make sure you turn high and then drop below contact so you can swing up through and then over the shoulder. You need to film yourself from the side to make sure that the lowest part of your swing is, is lower than the contact height. That will allow you to swing up and impart the topspin that you need. Now, we talked about the non-hitting hand. We want the non-hitting hand up at contact. So this is idea number five. I know I already mentioned this, but make sure that on your forehand, film yourself from the side and make it look like you are waving to your opponent. This is the key to making sure that you rotate your hips. It's funny because in the comment section, I always get people saying the opposite. They're like, no, 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 Ryan, when you rotate, whoops, I didn't have a tool there. When you rotate your body, that's what moves the non-hitting up, non-hitting hand up. So it, so you got it backward. No, I don't. <laughs> because the non-hitting hand going up is not automatic. You have to actually move it up there. Otherwise, it will drop. You will not turn your hips. And then you will not be able, you, it will impede hip turn. You will not be able to rotate in. I see coaches online trying to help students rotate their hips on a forehand and they never address the non-hitting hand. And the non-hitting hand is down. And you can force that student with manipulation and drills and focus and 15 straight minutes of just talking about it with them to finally get them to turn their hips. But when they go back into the wild and their non-hitting hand is still dropping, they will go back to not turning their hips. Until coaches start addressing the non-hitting hand rising as they're striking the ball and looking like they are waving to the opponent, the hips will not be able to rotate efficiently. Let me show you what this looks like from the back. The easiest way to check for this from the back view, if you're going to, if you have video footage of the back view, is the non-hitting hand should be visible over the non-hitting shoulder. So the yellow line, my non-hitting shoulder, the green circle, my non-hitting hand. My non-hitting hand, or sorry, mine, <laughs> his non-hitting hand is visible over his non-hitting shoulder. I love how he's looking at the ball, love it. Head staying super still as he strikes the ball. But you can see the non-hitting hand rising. That is what you want. The non-hitting hand visible over the non-hitting shoulder. It allows for the body rotation that swings the arm through. If you do not turn your body, then you'll just swing the arm and your shot is really gonna suffer. And the last idea, catch the racket in your non-hitting hand. You can see he's close to catching this one. Let me find another where he does. Yeah, I found one. This is a great one. Catches the racket in the non-hitting hand. You know who else catches, especially when he's practicing? You might recognize this guy, Carlos Alcaraz, taking the racket back with both hands, non-hitting hand clearing as he drops the racket. You can see his strings are facing closed, swinging low to high. Look at his non-hitting hand visible over his non-hitting shoulder as he's striking the ball. He looks like Sandrato looking at the ball. And watch how he catches 
the racket. Catches the racket in the non-hitting hand. I'll show you someone else who catches. Dominic Team. Racket back with both hands, clears the non-hitting hand as he's dropping the racket. Racket face closes. Look how he's hitting the ball as he's hitting. Watch. As he's hitting, his left hand, since that's his non-hitting hand, is rising. That is so critical. You cannot let this arm drop. Swinging low to high. And look at him catch high in the opposite hand. Now, the best way to practice these techniques is at home with a Topspin Pro. You can get a Topspin Pro using my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. I absolutely love the Topspin Pro, and I know you will too. And if you're looking for new practice partners or leagues or coaches in your local area, then use my link for Player Court, and it's playercourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. So follow these tips and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.